Barry Smith here again. Um, this time we're going to get into the IP addresses themselves and we're going to show you or I'm going to show you how that you can recognize the class of the IP address as well as break down into the network and node or host portion of the IP address. What number represents the network and what number or numbers represents the node or host. Uh, node, host, same thing. Uh, depending upon what book you read or who you talk to, some people call it a host ID, some people call it a node ID, N-O-D-E ID, same thing, uh, just depends on who you ask. So first and foremost, let me give you a brief history lesson as to why we have these classes in the first place. Uh, many people often wonder, what's the point, why do we have this, what's going on, and basically it's like this. When these numbers were invented, they were invented in the late 1970s. Uh, believe it or not, it's been that long. And when these numbers were invented, when this IP address scheme was invented, individuals such as ourselves were not on the network. We were not on the internet. In fact, at that time, the internet was not even called the internet. It was still called something called the ARPANET, A-R-P-A, -A, ARPANET. And the ARPANET um, was designed at the time to accommodate three basic things, uh, business, government and schools. That was the only entities that was designed to be on this network. We as individuals were never meant to be on the network, so these IP addresses were designed with those three things in mind. Now our Class A IP addresses, the idea behind the Class A is that they were going to assign Class A networks to the largest governments and the largest entities in the world. They were going to be the biggest governments, they were going to be the biggest schools, in the world, we're going to get a Class A IP address. That was the thought. Class B was designed for medium-sized uh, institutions. Medium-sized governments, medium-sized schools, um, they would get a Class B. Now, I say medium-sized, it's still pretty big, don't get me wrong, but, you know, it, it's a lot smaller than a Class A would be. And then Class C was designed for very small networks or very small businesses or entities in general. Um, these were designed for uh, your, your real small um, schools, very small. And the idea is, is that there are very few Class A addresses, but each Class A network has a lot of IP addresses to go with it. Class B is kind of medium sized. There's a decent bit of, uh, of Class B networks, and then there's also a pretty good bit of IPs that go with it. And the idea behind Class C was is that there would be a whole lot of those networks available but very few IPs per network because you just didn't need that many. So the idea really was to kind of um, reduce waste if you think about it. Uh, that was the concept, but that's not how it really turned out in real life. Uh, in real life, we waste a whole lot of IP addresses and we've been wasting them for years, but that's neither here nor there. So that's why you have these classes in the first place. That's why A, B, and C is there. Um, now, to tell the difference between uh, class A, class B, or class C, address, what you have to do is you have to look at the first octet. Now I have the octets listed up here in it's just blank lines for right now. So we have a, a line, dot, line, dot, so there's four octets like we talked about before. That's 32 bits in length. Um, and in the way IP addresses are written, unlike phone numbers, you know, phone numbers have dashes and stuff in the middle, IP addresses have periods. And when you read out the number, you also want to actually say the dot or the period. So you would say something like, you know, 192.168.1.1. You want to make sure that you say the dot when you're actually saying an IP address. That is the proper way to say it. Now, to determine, though, what the class is, even though you have four octets here, you only look at one octet, and that octet is just the first one. That's the only one you look at. If you see an IP address and you want to determine the class, you can take your finger and cover up the last three numbers and only look at the first number, and that will tell you what class you're dealing with. It is really that easy. So if you see a, um, a number, or an, uh, I should say an IP address, and that first octet, again, only the first octet, is a number between 1 and 126, that tells you that you have a class A IP address. So just the first octet, the second, third, and fourth, it can be any number. Just the first one would be 1 to 126. With class B, if the number is between 128 and 191, 
you have a class B IP address. Again, only the first octet, that's it, just the first. And then with class C, if the first octet is 192 to 223, you have a class C IP address. Now, many of you may be asking right now, wait a minute, uh, you skipped 127, what's going on with 127? Well, I'll tell you. I don't put 127 up in here. Uh, technically, 127 would fall into a class A um, IP address, but we don't use 127. We can't use 127. Uh, it, it gets really heavy into binary math and, and uh, uh, broadcasting and things like that, but the 127 uh, the 127 network, the way that the math works in binary, and again, it's, it's something you don't really need to know right now, but the way that the math works is that 127 actually points, believe it or not, it points back to yourself. So anytime you see an IP address that starts with 127, in essence, you're going to be talking to yourself. And there is a famous IP address that you do need to know, by the way, you need to know this, 127.0.0.1. This IP address is what's known as the local loopback or the loopback address, L-O-O-P, loopback. And what you're doing when you try to talk to this address again is you're trying to talk to yourself. You may be wondering, now why in the world would I want to talk to myself? Well, this is used for troubleshooting and testing. If you can ping or talk to yourself with this address, then that means that your network card is sending and receiving. It's a wonderful tool to use. But really and truly, it's the only thing that we use 127 for. 127 really can't be used for anything else. So because of that, since it's not really used, I always just skip over it, uh, which is why you see the gap in here. Now, once you see what class you have, and again, it's only on this first octet, memorize these numbers. Know your classes. You have to know what's A, what's B, and what's C. And really and truly, this is all there is to it. Look at that first octet. Once you figure out what the uh, class is, then you can determine what part of the IP address is the network part and what part is the node or host. And if you saw the other video I did on the phone number, remember the network part is just like your area code. And the node or host is exactly like your phone number. The network ID represents the network you're on or where you're at. The node portion represents you as an individual located on that particular network. So you, it's very important that you understand and know where these things are at. So if you have a class A IP address, a class A IP address has the first octet, this first octet here represents the network ID and the last three octets represent the node or host ID. So in other words, this first octet, this first number here tells you your area code or your network, and the last three represents you as one individual person located on that network. That's just for class A. If you have a class B address, Class B, the first two octets, represent the network, while the last two octets represent the node. So this number and this number together give you your area code. It's actually two numbers. But again, when you're looking at the class, you're only looking at the first number, so don't, don't get that confused. Once you determine the class, though, if you have a class B, this number and this number, whatever this number might be, these two together represent the network ID. Then with class C, you make it see a pattern going here. With class C, the first three octets represent the network ID, whereas the fourth octet represents the node. So in this case, the first three octets is your area code, and this last single octet, this last single number, would represent you as an individual. Now these other numbers that you see in these other octets, I, didn't, I haven't written them down on purpose because I wanted you to focus on this first octet to determine the class. But once you determine the class, you must also then uh, look at what other numbers are out there. Now if you uh, think of these numbers, we talked about uh, binary before, but if you think of these numbers as binary numbers, eight digits, eight bits, which is what each one of these octets are, 
if you convert eight ones or eight bits from binary to decimal, the number that you're going to come up with is 255. So in essence, each one of these other places here can be any number between 0 and 255. And the same would actually apply here. 0 to 255, 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 and 0 to 255. Only the first octet is limited when it comes to trying to find the class. The last three, anything between 0 and 255. You just have to remember what class makes what, and then what octets make your network and node IDs. If you can remember this, you're going to be way ahead of the game when it comes to subnetting, which will be coming up very soon. That's it for this lesson. Thank you very much. Hope you have a good day.